Good evening, everyone. This is Kevin and Natalie here, and uh, this is Writing on Air. Writing on Air is made possible by the generous contributions of KZFR supporters and by the Chico News and Review, providing Northern California with news, commentary, and entertainment. The Chico News and Review is available for free every Thursday at over 600 locations through Butte, Glen, and Tahama counties, and at newsreview.com. Oh man, this is going to be a super cool episode. Uh, this is the second episode in kind of like a series. Um, we're having uh, Butte, County, Butte County homeschoolers on. So a bunch of little uh, cool kids are with us who are all like writing books because they're all amazing at this mm -hmm. point. Um, yeah, and this is going to be a blast. So uh, how are you doing, Natalie? I'm great. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm doing well. And let's go. Melody, you've been here before. You can say hi. Hi, Melody. Good having you back. We're going to talk about your book some more at some point. And Adina, how are you doing? Good. Pretty good. Cool. And what about you, Mel or, uh, Olivia? <laughs> I'm doing great. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, um, last time we had, I think it was three, was it? Three people again last time? Yes. So this is about the, about the average so far. And I know you brought some poetry for us. I do. We should dive into that, I think. Okay. Um, first, I'm just going to say thank you, Kevin, for having me and... A lot of my poems right now are either based on fantasy for my book or for winter because it's getting cold. Wonderful. I went to the first one. The Frozen River. The Frozen River lies awake amongst, amongst the glistening white. The frost of winter chills the lake, but the river's the one that bites. Deer and other highly folk prance along her banks. The Frozen River shall provoke all who dare to cross. Hmm. And I have one more. Okay. I just wrote this one. An Elvis Army. <laughs> the tree warlock the tree warlock stood tall, the Elvis Army's head. No one dares mess with him, his staff shall never fall. The army charges head first, the enemy scared inside. Their leader will never retreat. A victory is nigh. You should be the host of the show at this point. Your writing <laughs> is... Ugh, go ahead. Um, I love that you are personifying nature and making human qualities out of these... these like the river biting. That's, that's very poetic. Very, very writerly of you already at such a young... How old are you again? I'm 10 years old. 10 years old. Such witty and astute observations for such a young lady. And I actually need to add to that. Um, it, I have a co-op history group. We do science, history, and a book club. And in that, we were just learning about metaphors, similes, and personifications. So um, I've been putting the, those um, three factors into my poetry. Excellent. Man. And I think also you have something else going on, right? I think yes. it was a, a goal or something like that. Yes, I am doing an online writing course called NaNoWriMo National November Writing Month. Mm -hmm. And oh. the goal is to finish a novel in one month. And you get to choose your own goal of words, like number of words. I chose 8,000 words and I'm 25, 29% um, finished with that goal at 2,350 words. Wow. That's amazing. I had a question, though. Um, your second poem, what was the title? Did you say El El The Elvis Army. Elvish? Yes. Oh, okay. Elvis yeah. Army would be pretty interesting, too. Yeah. <laughs> Elvish Army. So you, you're you very much involved with, like, magical and... Um, sort of like Middle Earth kind of Tolkien references. Yeah. And that's where, what you're reading, right? Yes. Um, I am doing a lot of fantasy and mythical stuff because my novel is about dragons in general. So um, I've been working on that genre to put into my, into my novel. Practicing, refining your, your words. Beautiful. Wonderful. Man. Ugh. Okay, we're going to come back to more of your stuff a little bit later on, I think. But I think we should go to Livia next. Okay, um, I'm reading a book called The Stupids Take Off. The Stupids Take Off. 
Um, and it's about four people who uh, are a family, and they're very stupid. Okay. And then this before you start, get a little bit closer to the mic. That way we can hear you. Perfect. The stupids are heavy sleepers. It took a lot to get them going in the morning. While Stanley Q. Stupid was brushing his teeth, a telegram arrived. Agates, cried Stanley. Uncle Carbuncle is coming. Mr. Mrs. Stupid let out a blood curling yelp scream from the kitchen. The two stupid kids had never heard of Uncle Carbuncle. While breakfast was hanging out to dry, Mr. Stupid took out the family album. Uncle Carbuncle is pretty strong medicine, said Mrs. Stupid. Uncle Carbuncle is to be avoided at all costs, said, cost, said Mr. Stupid. Why don't we take our vacation early this year? Oh, we get it, said the two stupid kids. Hurry up, hurry up, cried Mr. Stupid. He could hardly hear, he could be here any moment. I'm polishing my nails, cried Mrs. Stupid. They never looked prettier, said M Mr. Stupid. Now let's get a move on. Let's get a move on. While their supper, supper cat xylophone and the controls controls without a minute to spare, the stupids took off. At 10,000 feet, the stupids happened to pass Cousin Fifi, stupid. Can't stop to talk, said Cousin Fifi. I'm going to Grandfather Stupid's graduation, graduation from kindergarten. Au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs> Isn't Spanish a beautiful language? <laughs> On the spur. spur, on the spur of the moment, the stupids decided to attend little Patty Stupid's sixth birthday. Why are there eight candles on the cake? said Buster. Because I didn't have six, said Patty. That makes sense, said Buster. Little Patty's father, Uncle Artichoke, took the stupids to the backyard to show off his new diving board. The stupids were impressed. We really must get one of these, said Mr. Stupid. Over the Spitten Springs, the stupids ran into Farmer Joe Stupid, who complained about this year's crop of pencils. They just don't seem to grow, said Farmer Joe. Gosh, said Stanley. As the stupids flew away from Putton Springs, Aunt Flossie Stupid waved from her front porch. That Aunt Flossie is a real doll, said Mrs. Stupid. Lunchtime, come, Mr. Stupid. It, this, the stupid stopped at their favorite seafood restaurant. Get your shoes off the table, kids, said Mrs. Stupid. You don't want to soil them, said Mrs. Stupid. So you do don't want to soil them. 
Let's try to the catch of the day, said Mr. Stupid. Just to be nice, the stupids made a quick visit to Cousin Roscoe Stupids, who was recovering from the bad case of the jiggers. The stupids wore silly masks and made loud noises. Cousin Stupid, Cousin Roscoe didn't like, didn't seem happy to see us, said Mr. Stupid. He's a little braze. Bizarre. Bizarre, <laughs> said Mrs. Stupid. When dark fell, the stupids had headed home. We managed to escape Uncle Carbuncle, said Petunia. But we saw quite a few other relatives. That's incredible, said Buster. The stupids are everywhere. Back home, the stupids put on their diving equipment and got ready for bed. Good night, dear, said Mrs. Stupid. We had quite a fun day. Yes, said Mr. Stupid. That always happens sometimes. And pulled down the shades. The end. Great job. <laughs> Why did you choose that book? Um, Because I like the stupids. So do I. That's one of my favorites <laughs> from childhood. I love that you chose that. James Marshall wrote that book. And the illustrations are so funny. I wish that... Our audience could see them because they make that book all the more funnier. Yeah. What do you love about it? Um, that my uncle and my mom had those books when they were younger and how funny it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was cracking me up looking at it, <laughs> listening to it. Uncle Carbuncle. That's kind of a tongue twister. You did really well with that. <laughs> Good job. I read this book a few times. Oh, did you? Yeah. You prepared. Good girl. <laughs> Well, even though you've read it a few times, this is the first time, I think for writing on air at least, that we've had a book read cover to cover. So yeah. that's that's pretty cool. I wow. think we've had we've had excerpts from books, but never like a full one read. So uh, you have made history, made history here. Yeah, yeah show <laughs> history. <laughs> and I think Uncle Carbuncle is probably my favorite character. Yeah. That name, I'm going to keep that like forever. I wish I had an <laughs> uncle named Uncle Carbuncle. Yeah. That's Maybe wonderful. you do. Oh, no. know. <laughs> that is true. That is true. And I also, there's one part in that book that has, that talks about putting too many candles on the cake, I think. Yeah. I had a birthday Eight. that that happened to me at some Eight. point. I think I was like turning nine or 10 and there ended up being like, um, I think it was like too few candles. And I remember counting going, is this right? <laughs> Wait a minute. I, I, I can, I can count. And I, I think I went like almost the entire party without saying anything. Cause I, I just thought I was counting wrong, but so I relate to that book on a personal level. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, um, thank you very much for reading that. Yeah. And then Adina, you have something too, right? Yes, I've been writing a book called The Search of India. And I would like to read it, what I've wrote, written to you guys. Um, right ahead okay once in a land a long time ago there was a ship and on that ship there was pirates they were mean cruel and unkind most of them were grouchy they lived on a ship and they ate and drank food and water like us they are from Bingai one day their captain decided to search for land and at one point they got in a swinging storm and before they knew it they found land today we call it india yeah, that's what i've written so far whoa that is amazing <laughs> i like that swinging storm <laughs> Sounds like a song title. Anything about pirates, I'm on board. <laughs> yeah. Instantly. And you have a, a little illustration there? Yeah. What's, yeah. what's that? Describe it to us. Um, wait, 
Oh, the picture. The What's picture, the picture? Yeah. It's a, the picture is a picture of an island. Very neat. Very neat. So how um, you, are you going to continue that story then? Or? Yeah. Wow, right on. So why India of all places? I don't know. I think India just expires me. I think like all of the animals there, it just they inspire me like peacocks and tigers. Yeah. I think they're just really beautiful and they in the ex it inspires me. How old are you? I'm seven. You know you know what's weird is when I was your age I had this weird obsession with India. I like I had to look at pictures of it and I thought about it all the time. That's same with me. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, I love that. That you have some good words there too. That's a good start. Mm-hmm. And you'll have to come back when you've written more of it, obviously, because we know this is where it needs to be aired again so we can hear it, because this is okay. an unfinished story. We want to hear the rest of it. Yeah. So next time when you come back on, we'll, we'll okay. be looking forward to more of it. <laughs> so I forgot to ask, too, um, Livia, how old are you? I'm nine. Nine. So nine, and it was seven? Yeah. And ten. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. You guys writing novels already, reading books cover to cover on air? What have I been doing with my life? I know, right? <laughs> This is amazing. Well, I think um, I want to go back to you, Melody, because you have some more too, right? I do. Um, <laughs> Question mark. Yes. Um, while I'm finding it, I do need to add that, weren't you saying something about a birthday cake poem? Yes, I was. So um, I might have one, while you're looking for that, I'll, I'll fill in the audience what that was. Um, about three shows ago, three or four shows ago, might Jan. have been four shows, yeah. Jan Matthews, a really um, great artist, um, great writer, has hi published Jan. a few things. Yeah, hi Jan, <laughs> hope you're listening. Um, and I'm still working on that, by the way, in case you are listening. Uh, she kind of made an open-ended, um, well, not open-ended, very explicit, uh, call to action for a lot of writers. If you want to write, or basically give us a theme, she said, write something about birthday cake. Anything, haikus, poetry, a story, and then submit it. And we're going to have a show for it. Or if you have a piece right now, we'll, we'll definitely take that. Okay, I do. I have some others, but I just found a birthday cake one. Fantastic. Very short, but birthday cake with sprinkles, birthday cake with cherries. No matter what the birthday cake's flavor is, it's always fun to make. Mm. Wonderful. <laughs> I don't like birthday cake. I just like to make it. I don't either. <laughs> this is me. Me neither. <laughs> you're in good company. I was an ice cream fan, not a not a birthday cake fan, personally. Sorry if you're singled out there, Olivia. <laughs> yeah, I, I like muffins. I also love frozen yogurt. Yeah. Like my favorite thing. Yeah. I can agree with that too. So, did you write that around a birthday? Your birthday uh, or? No, I do have some birthdays coming up. Not mine in particular. Particular. But um, I just thought that since you guys had the theme going on, I would do that. Yeah, thanks. Anyways, um, also adding to Adina's, I love pirates too. <laughs> so this one does not include the word pirate, but it is generally about pirates. Zipwreck. A windy sea voyage continues through wrath. The crew is tired with, without a single ember in their path. A wall of ice blocks their way halfway through an icy bath. Wonderful. Man. Chilling. <laughs> I So there's different types of writing that people can do. Obviously, there's thousands of different types, millions even. Um, but some of the common ones that come up are ambiguous and explicit. And ambiguous writing is kind of like mysterious. You can't quite pin it down. Um, it's kind of hard to grasp, and, it, and usually you have to kind of read into it and understand. You have gotten, you've gotten really good at the explicit style, where you can almost touch and see exactly what you're talking about, which is a really, that's a hard talent to get down. Sort of like a sensory image. Exactly, yes, yeah. When you can see the ice and you can feel the chill and stuff, that's a really, really good talent. I have another chilly one. Yeah. Um, like I said, I'm writing about winter. I was going to say, yeah, feeling um, the season. <laughs> Um, it's called The Snake. The snake emerges from his dark and dismal cave. He's cold from all the winter rock sade. His tears are always frozen inside. For the snake, all he wants is for winter to abide. Mm. Which makes sense, too, because snakes don't like winter. They get very cold in that. They need the summer sun. Wow, that's so cool. Man. I love themed stuff. We haven't had a chance to do any too many themes on the show, but maybe we'll get there at some point, kind of work towards it. 
Um, I, I yeah. really liked the shipwreck one because it felt like we were just right in the middle of a story. It was a nice narrative that we just kind of fell into the middle of. I felt like I wanted more. I wanted to go with that entire story. Like, where, how did we get there? And where were we going? And what happened? And so, yeah. It felt like the g a good, um, a mini poem, but part of a, st a larger larger narrative. So, yeah. just a, a hint, hint that I want a story out of that. A taste of. <laughs> <laughs> well, read uh, one more for us, and I have some questions for Olivia. Okay. Um. I don't really don't like this one very much, but it's called The Spice Girl. Her breath is a cousin of Sriracha. Her voice, the sound of fate. But her beauty, the feel of clothes on a wheel. The Spice Girl trusts no one. Never stop writing. <laughs> Your stuff is amazing. This is super cool. Her breath is, what was that, what was that line? Her breath is, let's see. Her breath is a cousin of Shirasa. I have, it just like... You're moving evokes. into more modern poetry territory <laughs> there. I like that. Um, yeah. I think that might be because I read the New Yorker all the time. Ah, I good choice. Yeah. Poetry. Practicing a different style. Yeah. Good way to do it. Well, I have to ask, uh, Livia, have you written anything yourself? Yes, um, I wrote a bunch of books in first grade. And I am writing a book called The Search of the Hidden Falls, but I didn't want to bring that one in because I only written one paragraph because I'm trying to make this book really good. It's a work in progress. We'll get there. Man, that's so cool. We haven't had, let's see, I'm trying to think back on the history of the show. We've had maybe like a handful of people who have been, who have written books and are even working on them. So you guys are among the people who have like made it into that category, which is really cool. Um, and I have a second question too. What? Why do you like writing? What? What does it for you? Um. I don't know. That's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's uh, sometimes when I'm writing anything, I'll write it and I'll look at it and go, "What? Why did I write this? I I just don't know. But I wanted to, so I did." <laughs> I think that's just as acceptable as an answer as someone who does it for a job. <laughs> I have a question for Adina. Yes. Do you think you'll ever go to India one day? I I really want to. Really? Yeah. Do you think you'll go there and write about it? Maybe. Yeah. I don't I don't know. <laughs> you could go there and write about it and illustrate it too. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, actually. I, don't know when I will. <laughs> you have a long future ahead of you, so yeah. <laughs> Don't have to plan it now. We had asked the um, girls last time what they wanted to be when they grew up. What about you two? I kind of want to be like a doctor for animals, helping the animals. I, I, I think animals really inspire me. Ooh. I want to stay home and do what my mom does. Wow. She does essential oils. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's good work. I use essential oils, so <laughs> keep it going. <laughs> what was your answer from last time? I don't remember Melody. Well, sort of two things. I want to be an English teacher, but I also want to write novels. So do both. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Wow. Well, I know um, sometimes we ask people towards the end of our show, and maybe this is a bit broad, but I think we'll go with it. Uh, if you had to give advice to someone who's just starting, just starting to write a book, starting to write a poetry, what do you think you would say to them? And we'll start with you, Melody, if you have, if you have an idea. Find inspiration in everything you see. <laughs> Wonderful. What about you, Olivia? Um, to look in a dictionary and find the best words. Yes, expand your vocabulary. That actually is a really, we've had writers come in who have written, um, actually I would, I'll pull back a little bit more. That sometimes is the difference between okay writing and really good writing. When you read it and go, wow, I have to actually look up that word because I don't, this is like, I don't understand what this is and you have to go and understand what has been written. So looking in a dictionary is a really solid piece. What about you? Um, I would say reading books and seeing like words that you're really inspired by and Maybe like put it together in a sentence that you like on your book that you're writing. 
very true. Actually, some of the biggest authors out there's best advice is to read more before you write. Read, read, read. Yes. And also, you can sort of emulate people's writing, mm -hmm. but I'll, like put it in your own words too. Excellent. Man, I'm we have a new co-host here. We do. <laughs> We need new co-hosts. Mm. They can all come on. This is great. Yeah, we need. <laughs> and I want to say too, yeah. um, we've asked uh, much older people than yourselves that same question many times, and a lot of times they're kind of stumped and they don't really know what to answer. So it takes them a little while. You guys didn't even have to think about it. Yeah. You knew exactly what you wanted to say. So that's absolutely fantastic. I'm super impressed by, always by Melody, just blown away. So. She's rolling her eyes, but it's very true. You are an impressive young woman. You are and I'm saying young woman instead of young lady or girl. And you too, just, I adore you. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful work. I can't wait to see what your book is about. Or I think you told us what it was about, but I want to see the full bit. So once you flesh mm -hmm. it out some more, you'll have yeah. to bring it in. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And thank you so much. Um, keep drawing pictures for your own books too. That's yeah. what I'd have to say for you, Adina. And more about India, because I love India still. Same. Yes. <laughs> well, I just wanted to say thanks, you guys. This has been an absolute blast having you on the show. And we'll have to have you guys back again at some point. And for those of you who come back a second time, thanks for coming. And uh, this has been Writing on Air. Writing on Air is made possible, as soon as I find the uh, correct thing to read here, by the generous contributions of KZFR supporters and by Harrison Daily Wright Accounting Corporation in Chico. Harrison Daily Wright, specializing in accounting, bookkeeping services, auditing, tax, prep and pla tax preparation, planning, and management support services for nonprofit organizations and more. To reach Harrison Daily Wright, call 895-1209. And for anyone who wants to be part of the show or submit or do anything along those lines, you can do so at wright.onair at gmail.com. If you have any questions, concerns, or just generally want to say hi, please follow that email. Have a good night, everyone.